of my other jobs for the day is to begin our cochineal dyeing experiment, not in the cold dye, but we are gonna reuse the cold dye bath and see if we can get, hopefully it's exhausted and we can use it to put in this pot and get some really light pinks that we can then turn purple with Saxon blue. But I wanted to show you how much the matter stained the pot. Uh, this pot belongs to red things now because no matter how hard I scrub it, more keeps coming off. I've been scrubbing it for a good 35 minutes and it ain't happening. But uh, anyway, I'll get that started and on the stove and then we will see if we can do some cochineal dyeing today. Okay, so I safely got the cochineal into the matter stained bucket, adding cream of tartar, which is uh, made of tin, ultimately. Uh, anyway, uh, it's tin. And you can add cream of tartar to make sure that your dye bath stays super bright. And we would like bright pink because I would like to also layer some pinks and use these to um, exhaust the dye bath as well as show the difference in color you get from boiling your cochineal versus our cold dyeing experiment. So I'm going to add a bit of cream of tartar I want to say it's like 8% of fabric weight, but I have no idea what I'm going to throw in there. So I'm just going to put some cream of tartar in and pray. The dye bath is not exhausted. I repeat, the dye bath is not exhausted. But wow, the um, adding a bunch of cream of tartar really did brighten it up quite a bit. I am impressed by that. But if I want these to be a light color, they will need to come out. I don't. I want them to go for a bit, so I'm going to leave them in there. Wow, that is persistent. Okay, so I've given these about 30 minutes in there. They do not seem to have exhausted the dye bath at all. So I'm going to do at least one skein of yarn to try and get it to rob some of the color out of this. And then I will also um, rob another skein and see if I can get a light one because I want to get at least one really light pink one where the dye bath is exhausted so that I can put it with the uh, Saxon blue. You have the sisterhood of the traveling pants. I have the inexhaustible cochineal dye bath. This is the one that we did the cold dyeing with. I've added water to it twice. I have dyed six skeins of yarn, all this fabric, and I put two of the ones that I dyed and weld through as well. And it's still dyeing things that color and I can't get it to stop. There's no diluting it, so uh, we will just have a lot of dark purples in our Saxon Blue test. So to finish off our cochineal hot dyeing experiment, wow, was that an experiment I did not expect turning out like this. What I did was add cream of tartar to the dye bath because it will brighten the pinks and make them more pinky and less uh, deep, like dragon fruity purple. It definitely did that, but what it did was also make it very, very hard for the cellulose fibers to absorb any of that color, which is crazy. And it seemed to help the wool absorb all of the color. This is my attempt at exhausting that dye bath, which obviously didn't work because that's the lightest color I got. And I dipped that yard in for less than... 20 seconds and that's as light as I could get it so that dye bath still is incredibly ferocious and to give you an idea of the difference here's the color we got from the cold dye bath onto the the vegetable fiber meeting uh, the cottons and linens that's the color we got from a cold dye bath which turned to this when I added cream of tartar and heat and then these are the yarn colors we got so it's definitely more burgundy and the cream of tartar absolutely brightened this up, which is uh, adding tin to the bath, basically. So it absolutely brightened it, took it right out of the magenta territory and right into a hot pink fuchsia and kind of a truer red. So that was absolutely wild. And I used one teaspoon of cochineal for all that. And it's still dyeing wool that looks like this. So if you ever buy any, don't buy more than like four grams because you do not need more than that unless you're dyeing some 
real serious yardage. But anyway, I thought it was fascinating to see how the difference was. And then I have one more thing to add. It was noted in history that, of course, matter was the first uh, red that humans were using to dye the root. And then they figured out the cochineal deal after uh, colonists came to the, quote, new world. It's really the old world, ironically. Anyway, uh, they used matter plus cochineal to make true reds. And so I dyed some matter. I dyed a dark one and a light one when I exhausted the dye bath to try and create some truer reds with the cochineal. And check that out. They're definitely a little more rusty orange than red. I think the truest reddish color we got was from the, the first dip of cochineal when I was trying to get it to soak up some of the dye, but that is with matter and cochineal as a dip. And it really kind of redded up the more rusty color. So I thought that was absolutely fascinating. I appreciate you coming on this cochineal dye journey with me so very much. If you would give me a like or a subscribe or comment on what was your favorite form of the cochineal in this experiment, I would be eternally grateful as I am trying to grow my viewership and reach that small but amazing 1,000 subscribers all learning to do fiber arts with me. So thank you again, and I will see you in the next experiment. Bye!